Hello guys and welcome to Matt Speamer. Today I am filming the first fan on my channel which is known as the Lada Largus. Thank you to Nikita from the Hangar Steakhouse in Koptava, Moscow for letting me film his 2019 Lada Largus 1.6 van as well as the Skoda Octavia Mark III in the last video. So, back in 2012 Lada stopped producing the legendary Lada 2104, which was in production since 1984, a bit like me. In 2012, Lada bought out the Lada Largus, which was seen as a replacement. The Largus was the first project between Autovaz and the Renault-Nissan group, as you will probably notice throughout the video. The Largus was built on the Dacia, or Dacia, BO platform, which was used for many other type of vehicles, such as the Lada X-Ray, the Renault or Dacia or Dacia, however you want to pronounce it, Logan, the Sendero, the Duster, the Dacia Duster 2, the Renault Arcana, I think I said that correct, the Renault Capture, and the Nissan Kicks. The Lada Largus was also known as the Dacia Logan MCV, depending on your country. The Largus was available in either a mini MPV or a panel van. There was a choice of two 1.6 engines, an 8 valve and a 16 valve, with various horsepower output levels. This one has 1.6, which has 106 horsepower. There was only one transmission available, and that was the 5 speed manual. Anyway, let's look at the van. In my opinion, it is quite a decent looking van, especially when you compare it to the actual Dacia version. Okay, it won't win any beauty pageants, but it's not bad. It's finished in a glacial white. Starting at the front, you have the large Lada logo located on the grille, which shows off the Viking ship proudly. The grille on this vehicle, I believe is the lower end grille, as some models have chrome and some are even colour coded. The headlights in this car are just your usual halogen bulbs. Nothing fancy here, they're just keeping the cost down. The bumper on this car is the unpainted version, which gives it a rugged commercial vehicle feel. They are also very cheap to replace. You can also have them colour coded if you have a higher model. Below the headlight, you have the towing eye. And moving on down even further, you have a set of front fog lights, which the lower trims don't seem to get. Moving up onto the bonnet, you have the jet washers. The coefficient drag of the Largus is the same as the 1974 Lamborghini Contash, with the reading of 0.42. The wipers are of the old school design. This vehicle has 15 inch steel wheels which are wrapped in 18565 R15 Pirelli Centurato tyres which are the same model as my BMW 1 series. The front brakes are vented discs and the suspension is independent McPherson struts spring mounted with the anti-roll bar. This vehicle also has ABS. The Largus has its side indicators located on the front rings. The door mirrors in this car are made from black plastic and are non-electronically adjustable. Down the side of the van we have black plastic trim to help protect the van from other cars opening their doors onto it. The doors in this van also have black plastic door handles, while some models have colour coded versions. Each side door has a key lock as it is a van. The MPV version only has key locks on the front two doors. The fuel door opens by pulling it out. Inside you will see the cap and fuel information. The tank can fit in 50 litres. And it is also said that these vans can do a combined mass per gallon of 36. The rear wheels are the same size as the front wheels, but it has drum brakes at the rear. And half independent lever type spring actuated suspension. Heading around to the back, you will get two rear doors that open in a 60 40 ratio. Up top, we have the third level brake light. The rear taillights are very clear to understand on this van. Above the rear black strip, you have the Lada badge and the Largus badge. The black strip houses the rear number plate light 
and also the rear door release. There is no cylinder lock here. The rear bumper on this vehicle matches the front, though there are some rear reflectors and a rear towing eye. Under the rear bumper, you will see where the spare wheel is hidden, though I have seen some vehicles with the rear wheel located on the rear door itself. On the roof, you have a long aerial, plus you will see where you can fit the roof rails. The length of this vehicle is 4,470mm, while the width is 1,750mm. The height is 1,650mm and it has a ground clearance of 145mm. Let's have a look at the key. This key has a key which looks very similar to my friend's old Renault Clio years ago, back in the early 2000s. There are two buttons, unlock and lock. I must say, it is good to see that this Largus has central locking. Not all of them do. Let's have a look inside the van. The interior of this van feels very familiar. You can see the strong influence from Renault. The plastics are all hard, as you would expect with a commercial vehicle, but then again, I guess the family car version is the same. There is plenty of black and grey throughout though, and the amount of toys is quite low compared with other vans in this category, but then again, it is a lot cheaper. Starting at the top of the hard plastic dash, you will see that there are air vents aiming towards the windscreen and side windows. Moving on down the level, we have the usual black plastic air vents, which I have also seen on the Datsun Go and the Lada Granta. The Granta has appeared on my channel before, along with the Lada Vesta. I will leave down the links below. The Lada radio on this vehicle has a few impressive extras, such as MP3, auxiliary, USB and Bluetooth, and you can even connect your telephone somehow. Moving on down, we have a row of buttons. Bang in the middle, we have the hazard switch. On the right hand side, you have the essential locking switch, and on both sides of this, you get the electric window switches, which I thought was an unusual location. Underneath the buttons, we have the heater controls. The left wheel controls the zone, basically where you want the air to go. In the centre, you have the fan speed, and behind that, you have the air circulation on and off. The right hand wheel controls the air temp. There is also a button that turns the aircon on and off. Moving on down a bit more, you have two really shallow cup holders. I don't think I would trust them though. Unless I was carrying jelly, I suppose. The gearbox on the Lada Largus is a five speed manual, which I believe is the only choice. Reverse on this gearbox is to the right and you pull backwards. The final drive on this vehicle is the 3.9. Just back from the gear stick, you have a, another strange shallow storage tray. And just back from that, you have a handbrake. Oh, and just behind the handbrake is another pointless cup holder. What's going on? Let us look at the instrument cluster and insert the key and have a butcher's to see what we have got. So as you can see, like the Renaults, the lights are orange. On the left hand side, you have the rev counter. In the centre, we have a digital display. It displays the mileage, the time, the trip mileage, and the petrol gauge. Oh, and also the coolant temperature. The speedo is just on the right hand side. The steering wheel in this car is very comfortable to use, and as you will notice, it's just like the wheel from a 2003 Renault Clio, but with a Lada logo on it. This wheel also contains an airbag, and it also has hydraulic power assisted steering. As well as that, there is a lever that allows you to adjust the height of the steering wheel, as you can see. The horn is located on the left stalk, along with the light controls. The wipers are located on the right hand side. Just in front of your left knee, there is a switch which allows you to adjust the headlight aim level. Oh, and this is where the bonnet release is located. The seats on this van do their job. They're not the most comfortable seats, but they do the job well. The main issue is with having the bulkhead just behind you. It just limits your space a little. 
The seats can be adjusted forwards and backwards, and there is also adjustment in the backrest, as you would expect. Both seats are heated, which is a must in Russia, especially in the winter. Let's look at the door. Up top, we have a little joystick to adjust the door mirror. Both sides aren't electric. The door grab on this car is finished in a silver plastic, and as you would expect, the door plastics are also hard. The door handles are also plastic, but this door also contains a speaker and some storage. Up on the roof lining, you have the sun visors. The passenger is luckier though, because he or she gets a mirror. Here are the interior lighting controls and the SOS button. The passenger also gets a roof grab. Now, let's jump into the passenger side. The passenger's door has exactly the same function as the driver's. The passenger also gets an airbag, as you can see, and just below that you have a glove box. It is made from cheap plastic. Though saying that, um, inside there is a light, and at the very very back there is an OBD2 port for diagnosing your vehicle. This van has three ways to enter the rear area. It doesn't have sliding doors, but it has two normal side doors on the rear, obviously with no glass. Instead of a normal door card, the lower half of the door has a super simple plastic cover to protect the metalwork. The bulkhead between the interior and the rear is actually made from thick plastic. Which surprised me really, because I thought it would be strong. The rear doors at the very back of the vehicle open in a 40-60 ratio. They are also lined at the bottom with plastic to protect the metal. They can also be opened from the inside, should you get stuck inside. You can also open the doors so they open 180 degrees from their closed position. Unfortunately, you can't open the doors so they are flat against the side panels which is a shame, but hey ho. Inside the rear, it is pretty big. The size of the rear in litres is 2,540. The curb weight of the van is 1,300 kilograms. The gross vehicle mass can technically be up to 2,000 kilograms. The front axle can technically carry up to 1,100 kilograms, while just over the rear axle, it is able to take 900 kilograms. It's best to check with your specific van though and the laws in your country and all that kind of stuff. As you can also see in the rear, there are plenty of tethering points to keep your load secure. And there is a plastic floor to help protect the metal floor from obviously your stuff in the back. Just here, there is a jack to help you remove the wheel. And just up top, we have some interior lighting. Let's open the bonnet and talk about this engine and listen to it purr. The engine in this van is the quickest in the lineup. All the engines in the Largus are 1.6 petrol engines, but some have 8 valves and others have 16 valves. This is the 1569cc multi point distributed injection 1.616 valve inline 4 engine. That was a tongue twister. It also has 106 horsepower at 5,600 revs per minute, and it has 148 newton meters of torque at 4,200 revs per minute. As this fan is front wheel drive, the engine sits transversely in the engine bay. 0 to 60 is roughly about 14 seconds. Let's start her up and listen to it run.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's not the normal stuff you're used to, but it's for me it's interesting to film other things too. If you want to see more in-depth tours, please let me know and what you want to see. Also feel free to like, share and subscribe. Take care and enjoy the rest of your week.